Hey guys, Matt here, bringing you um, a new series. Uh, what this series is going to be is um, an introduction to Java games programming uh, through the creation of noughts and crosses. Um, so we're going to start with a nice simple game just to get um, a bit of the logic down um, and some basic Java knowledge understood. Um, uh, so yeah, uh, let's just get started. So you want to come into your um, IDE and create a new Java project. Um, for this one, I'm just going to call it noughts and crosses. And what you're going to want to do is create a new cl uh, new class inside the source called main. Okay, um, so it's a new project, so we have to do the thing that you have to do the same thing every time with a new project and create your main methods: so public static void main string args. Okay, so that's our main method. That's our application entry point created. So next thing we need to do is create some initialization methods. So these are going to be run from our main method to actually start everything off. So public void init underscore components and public void init underscore icons. Okay, so what these are going to do um, is we're going to put in a little bit of code um, in each one of these, which is going to initialize everything. Um, so um, what we actually need to do first is create the objects that we're going to be initializing. So for nots crosses, we're actually going to have um, two images, um, well actually image icons, which is going to be x and uh, naught, so noughts and crosses, um, and we're going to have a uh, grid of buttons, uh, which is going to be our actual grid, and then we're going to have an uh, integer uh, array which is going to be the board. So what we're going to start with is the J button. So public J button array grid equals new J button. Um, and we're just going to say nine of them because we're going to have three by three. How else you can spell and capitalize. Okay, so if we organize the imports and import that, what we're going to want to do now is create some image icons. So public image icon, x icon, zero icon, or o icon. Okay, and again, import that. So what that's going to hold, um, the array of uh, J buttons is going to be our actual play board, so what we click, um, and the uh, image icon is going to be what we display on the screen. So, um, what we need to do now is actually put everything on the screen. Um, so the way we're going to do that is uh, we're going to, in our init components method, um, we're going to just create a J frame. We're going to create a panel. We're going to add it to it, and then we're going to put in all of the um, buttons. So, um, what we're going to do. Okay, so in here, create a new J frame. So J frame frame equals new J frame. Organize the imports and spell J frame correctly. So frame dot set default close operation, and that's going to be three, which is exit on close. So it's going to stop the Java application when it closes. Frame dot set visible true frame dot set resizable true um, because one of the bits of code you will add is to allow us to resize the buttons nice and easily and frame dot set so that, no we won't need to set the size just yet um, so um, what we need to create now is a j panel um, now j panel is something that we can draw to and then put that inside the frame to um, hold everything. So it's similar to a container, um, which is just going to hold all of our buttons. So J panel, panel equals new J panel. Okay, frame dot get, uh, frame dot uh, set content pane, panel. 
Now this wouldn't throw an error if I'd spelt JPanel correctly. Organize the imports. So that's going to set it as the main content of um, our J frame. Um, so that's so now we've actually got the panel on the frame. So what we need to do now is um, set the layout of the panel. Uh, so what we're going to say is panel dot set dot set layout, and this is going to be a new grid layout. And my capitalization is all over the place today. Grid layout. And the parameters we're going to give it are 3, 3, 0, 0. Okay. So what that's going to do is it's going to create a default layout for us, which is just going to be three rows of three columns. So basically it's going to be a 3x3 three three grid, which is our knots and crosses board. Okay, so uh, one of the final things we need to do for panel is say panel dot add um, what we're going to be doing is adding a component listener so panel dot add component listener new component listener um, and if you just open that up and at the end of that now this is going to want you to add unimplemented methods so import it first and then add the unimplemented methods. Now what we're actually going to be making use of here is not component shown but component resized. Moved again we won't need, um, component hidden we won't need. Um, the only one as I say we're going to need is actually going to be component resized and for this all we're going to say is init underscore icons. Now, the reason why is going to come very clear shortly. Um, so that probably doesn't make much sense at the moment, but it will do eventually. Ooh, minimize that. Okay. Um, so now that we've actually created our panel, um, what we need to do is add all the buttons to it. So if we come down underneath the component listener, I'm going to create a for loop, so for int i equals 0, i is less than 9, i plus plus, and we're just going to create a final integer. Um, now the reason it's going to be a final integer is because we're going to be passing it into an action listener. Um, so final int pos equals i. Okay. Um, so what we go to do is make use of the grid array that we made further up and say grid i equals new j button. Again, capitalize the b. Okay, and then grid i dot add action listener new action listener and close that segment, organize the imports, and add the unimplemented methods, which is, should just be action performed. Okay, so what what we're going to do in here is, if you leave everything in, outside of this, we're going to say int id equals pos. Now we could have just say int id equals i because um, i can constantly change and it really doesn't like us doing that. Uh, in fact, it won't compile. So that's why we've had to create the final integer um, equivalent of it, which is pos. So what we will do in the action performed is just going to say play i um, id even. So just going to play the id. Um, so just above our init components method. It's going to create a method public void play int id. Okay, so if we come back down here to our actual performance, um, that's actually the action listener done and finished. So now that we've created the action listener, we can add it to the, the board. So panel.add grid i. Okay, so that's going to have added the button to the grid. So the final thing we need to do is just say frame dot set size 
and just something nice like 450 by 450. Okay, so now if we save this and run it, absolutely nothing's going to happen. And that's because we've not actually put anything in the main method. So the final part of this um, is we're just going to make it all display on the screen. So we're going to say main m equals new main, and then m dot init components. Okay. Um, so in fact, we'll just add m dot init icons as well um, because we will fill out that method um, shortly. But now, if we save this and run it. We're going to get a J-frame, and it's got nine buttons, three by three. So what we can do with this is we can resize it, and you can see all the buttons resize to fit. Now all of these have got an action listener on them, so the play method is actually running for each one. So in here, if we just quickly add system dot out dot print line playing square and then plus ID. If we run this again, what you'll see um, if we start clicking these is down here, it's playing a square with an ID. And that's how we're actually going to be playing our game.